What is going on everybody? Today we are going to set up a new guitar. Uh, this is a guitar that I built for a customer. This is um, a hardtail Strat. Uh, basically it's got a roasted maple neck. We've got clues and locking tuners on here. Uh, two of my P90s, volume tone, orange drop cap, hardtail string through. Really cool guitar. I really, really like this thing. This is the second one of these we built. The first one I built, uh, we sent it to, I want to say uh, Ukraine, actually. And then I think that guitar ended up in Poland. So um, kind of a funny story. The gentleman who ordered this guitar wanted that one. And because of what's going on over there, he couldn't purchase it from the guy. So um, he said, can you build, build another one just like it? And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So it's taken about six months or so to get this thing sorted, but it's about ready to ship uh, this afternoon. I think we will put this thing in the box and get it out to the customer. But before we do that, we need to do a setup on this guitar. Let's talk about what a setup is and what it is not. Uh, when you buy a new guitar, comes to you, gets to you in the box, comes in the mail, or you pick it up from the guitar store, um, every manufacturer has a kind of a min-max setting for a bunch of stuff. That could be nut height, that could be string height, that could be where the neck relief is in the guitar, uh, and then that guitar travels on a boat uh, across the seas, or that guitar travels in a UPS truck to get to you. There's a bunch of different reasons why when you get a guitar out of the box, it's not exactly how you want it. That's notwithstanding the fact that that guitar is probably not set up for you unless you had that guitar perfectly set up for you. Because like I said, each company has like a min-max setting that the guitar can fall between before they throw it in the box and ship it out. So the guitar has never been set up. People need to get that out of their heads. The guitar has never been set up. It's set to a min-max, thrown in a box, and shipped to you. So this is not a quality control thing. This is something that each player should do to their own guitar when they get it out of the box. They should do their own setup on it. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're gonna focus on a few things. We're gonna focus on neck relief. We are going to focus on string height, intonation, and pickup height. Most of the time when you buy a guitar, the nut height is pretty close. It might be a hair high for most people, but it's within it usually a good standard. Um, we have specific videos. I'll leave a link up here uh, to a video where we talk specifically about nut height and how to adjust it and what tools you need and all that sort of stuff. I'll leave that link right up here um, because we have a specific video on that and that takes a little extra time. If you do your need to do the nut, here's where it falls in the process where you should check it, okay? First of all, in this setup, we're gonna do our neck relief. Second of all, in our video, uh, in our setup, we're going to do the string height down here at the saddles. If you need to do work on your nut, after you do your saddles is where I would do the nut, okay? That's where I would make sure that the nut height is right. Most of the time on a new guitar, most people A, feel very uncomfortable doing this themselves, and B, most of the time, doesn't really need that much work, um, most of the time. After that, then, we're going to go on to resetting our string height because that'll change a little bit sometimes if you have to do a bunch of work on the nut. Then we're gonna set our intonation, then we're gonna set our pickup height, and the guitar is gonna be done and ready to go. You may see some things in this video that you do not agree with. Uh, you may see some things that'll never work, that doesn't make sense, because I'm gonna show you some stuff you've probably never seen before when it comes to guitar setup. Um, trust me, the stuff works. There's a million different ways to skin a cat. I'm just gonna show you how I do it and what has been effective for me and why. Before we get into this video, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like guitar stuff, because that's what we do. We're trying to make more videos, actually. We're working on that. Second of all, do me a uh, thank, I just wanna say thank you to our Patreon supporters, as well as our YouTube supporters, and everybody who uses that little, um, the YouTube, the super thanks button down there. It's like a, it's almost like a super chat, but for not a live video, thanks you. Thank you to you folks who've been using that stuff. And I really appreciate everybody who supports the channel. There's also some links in the description below to a couple of the tools that we're using today that I wanna show you that I think you should use and have in your arsenal of stuff so that you can get some work done. We will make a couple bucks affiliate links off of those things. I just wanna disclose that, but it's something that 
we use every day here. I'm not just faking it. We use this stuff all the time. Okay, so tools we're gonna need for this guitar setup are basic, pretty basic stuff. A good tuner is important. I think that's probably the biggest thing. I use this uh, Peterson Strobo Plus tuner, but there are a bunch of really good clip-ons by TC Electronic and uh, actually Peterson. I'll leave a couple of um, kind of cheaper alternatives. This is about 200 bucks, I think. Um, but I really like it and I do a lot of these, so it's worth having. Uh, if you have, and I should say, with any of these tools, if you do more than, I don't know, two or three guitars, it's worth having the good stuff because then you can have consistent results across your collection. So uh, that good tuner, um, I'm gonna use the Stumac little toolkit deal right here. It's got everything you need in it. You could go to Harbor Freight, assemble a bunch of stuff, but I really, really like this little kit. And then another thing that's not quite as uh, necessary, but I will show it to you and then I'll show you a cheaper way as well, is the little digital indicator thing for string height, which I really like for accuracy purposes. So um, we'll go ahead and get on with what we need to do. First thing we're gonna do is going to basically just tune the guitar up to pitch with whatever strings you're going to use on your guitar. And when I say strings, I mean the brand and the gauge that you plan to use because the tension is gonna set the entire setup. So neck relief is the most important measurement on the guitar because it sets the playing surface for all the other measurements. So what we're gonna do is now that the guitar is at tension, we're gonna fret the first fret where it meets the neck, and that could be different for every guitar. So wherever it meets the, I apologize, where the neck meets the body. So right here, and the first fret. And about halfway in between, we're gonna check how much gap there is between the string and the fret right here. Now, I like it to be almost totally flat. I like the, um, the the fretboard to be almost completely flat. Um, and there's a lot of argument about this, but um, I like it to be almost totally flat, especially with like a roasted maple neck that is really relatively stable and it's not gonna be subject to back bow. And the fret work on the guitar is really good. Uh, some people like about five thousandths, some people like about ten thousandths, and you would basically just fret it here, fret it here, and then put a feeler gauge halfway in between. And then if you wanted the center of the neck to come up and close that gap, you would tighten the truss rod about an eighth of a turn. Or if you wanted it to give yourself more gap, you would loosen it about an eighth of a turn, and that would probably give you about what you need. So I like it to be basically flat. I like when I tap on it from the first fret in the middle to there to be a little click, but I want it almost totally flat. Right away, I know you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 full of crap. That doesn't make sense. I've always heard blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. If you set the fretboard completely flat, you're not going to ever have any fret buzz. People think that the neck because they see, or the string, because they see it in a picture, is gonna be this weird hourglass blooming thing. Um, but that's not actually how a string vibrates. A string vibrates in a transverse wave. When you pluck the string, it actually kind of like, you know, that break dancing like move from the 80s where it like literally goes down, it's just transverse wave that moves down the string and comes back. It doesn't actually go out in that. Now the open string does. Okay, the open string vibrates the entire length of the string, but it does it still in that transverse fashion. So, so, if it doesn't buzz at the first fret, then it won't buzz at any other fret. Why? Because as we come up the neck, the angle becomes more and more and more and more acute, and it means that you're not gonna have any buzz higher up on the neck. You know that it's like for some people and they don't understand it, but that's why I like to have the thing almost totally flat. And it makes it way easier to keep track of. If you start to get some fret buzz in a particular time of the season, just set it back to flat. Because sometimes, you know, depending on the humidity and the dryness or whatever, it'll push a little bit because of usually when 
uh, humidity raises, the wood will expand and it'll push up in the middle. So that would cause that. But once or twice a year, eighth of a turn, get it back to flat, boom. This is not rocket science. Flat makes it easy and you will not have fret buzz. And anybody that gets in the comments and whines about this, I don't know, it works. All right, now string height is relatively simple as well. Uh, we're gonna go to the 12th fret right here and we're gonna measure it. Now there's a couple different ways you can measure it. The cheap, simple, easy way is with a simple straight rule and you can use whatever brand or whatever you want. And as far as uh, the measurement that we're going for here, we're gonna go uh, for 60 thousandths on all of this, 564 in fractions. Um, I don't know what it is in millimeters. We'll, we'll tell you in a minute because we're gonna use a digital gauge and I'll be able to do the conversion without thinking. But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this at whatever height we want using the screws down there at the bridge, which we'll show you in just a minute. Um, look in your service manual for your, your guitar or Google the factory settings for your guitar and make sure that they're correct. Uh, but for this, we're gonna go for 60 thousandths all the way across and I'll show you how we get there in a minute. Once we know what the measurement currently is, uh, then we are going to adjust it by using the appropriate tool down here on the bridge. So we're just gonna stick that in there and we're gonna go for 564 or whatever and we're going to just adjust. Now, one of the things you should know is on this bridge, there's a screw on either side of the string. So you wanna bring it down evenly, but there you go. So we just set it to whatever string height we want. Now, the way we're gonna do it is with a digital gauge. So we're gonna put this on the string that we wanna set the height. We're gonna zero it and we're gonna push it down. That's gonna give us 70, well, let's see, let's hold this properly. 71 thousandths, so we need to come down 11 thousandths. So basically, I come over here. That should be pretty close. Let's zero it again. Hold it correctly. 61 and a half, that's close. Move on to the next one. There we go. So now we have our string height set all the way across our guitar. Okay, so for this next part, we're gonna go ahead and tune this guitar up to pitch. Again, because we've messed around with the heights so much that we need to get this thing back to pitch. When we do it this time, uh, we not cared about this so much because it was kind of just a general setup situation, but now we want to get really particular. So use the best tuner you have, uh, put the guitar in playing position so that we're not using a neck rest or something and pushing on the guitar any which way. We want to have it in playing position so the weight of everything is where it's supposed to be. And then we're gonna go ahead and tune the guitar up as tightly as we possibly can to pitch. Now these next couple details are kind of important because we're about to set intonation, which is the last thing that we do. A couple of things I want to talk about for setting up your intonation. If you're a right-handed player, uh, put the guitar in playing position like we said, and then have the tuner facing you, okay? Uh, you can have it sitting on the floor, you can have it on your table in front of you, and we can have it facing you, okay? This is for a right-handed player. Uh, of course, for a left-handed player, you want it facing you too, but there's going to be a difference here in a minute. And what we're going to do is we are going to pluck the string, then we're going to fret the 12th fret. Now, if the needle moves towards the right, towards the bridge in this position, then the saddle needs to move towards the bridge. If the needle moves this way towards the nut, then the saddle needs to move towards the nut. That'll be a little different if it'll be backwards if you're left-handed, but if for most right-handed players, 
when you pluck the string, fret the 12th fret, if it goes to the right, move the saddle this way. If it moves to the left, move the saddle to the left. Real easy to remember. Now that one was pretty close, but let's see if there's another one that's not. It's moving this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our little extension on here so we don't damage the finish on our guitar. We're gonna come down here to our G string and we're going to tighten this just a little bit to pull the saddle towards the saddle. Let's try that much, okay? Now, we're gonna have to now, because we've changed the length of the string and the tension, retune this string as accurately as possible. Perfect. Let's do it again. Needs to go a little bit more. Probably about that much. Perfect. That one is going this way a little bit. So now, we're gonna come down here to the D string and we're gonna loosen this. When we loosen this, uh, you know, like a quarter of a turn or something, uh, the screw can kind of back out and won't give you an accurate movement of the saddle. So if you loosen, have to loosen it at all, push it in just a little, kind of just give it a little push like that. And that will um, make sure that the saddle is fully moved into the spot that you want it to go into. We are perfectly set up, perfectly intonated. And then the last thing we should do is check our pickup height, but we've got to plug it in to do that. This is kind of all relative uh, to what you want in your particular guitar setup. But the way I personally do it is I basically fret the last fret uh, of the neck and I make sure that the string's not gonna make any contact with it. On a normal single coil, um, this ends up being about three to four millimeters, about three, three millimeters ends up being right about right, three to four, something like that, right about right, or 150 thousandths, somewhere, somewhere right in there. Um, that's, that's pretty, pretty normal. Uh, with P90s, it's a little different. We'll get into that in just a minute because they're so powerful. So um, this is a little different. But basically what I do is I just, and then I just play it, you know? <laughs> sounds good right uh, and then I go to the bridge pickup and I basically just raise and lower the bridge pickup to be kind of in balance with the neck to taste So here's the thing about this. When you do this, uh, you can have a misconception of what you're hearing. The bridge pickup has more mid-range. The neck pickup has a lot more bass. So the loud, soft levels that you hear um, might be just different to your ear depending on how you hear. That's why I like to, now I'm obviously recording this for the video, but um, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll plug in the guitar to my DAW on my computer and I'll look at the levels and I'll just see, are they actually the same? Because my ears could be tricking me. The amount of mid-range versus the amount of bass, where those are in the frequency response, because um, it can trick you. Mid-range will poke through and sound sort of honky and you can adjust how you want that based on your pickup height. Again, this is kind of all how you want your guitar to sound. But my bass line is, fret the last fret, make it to where it doesn't touch, give it a little room, ends up being three or four millimeters, something like that. And then I raise and lower the bridge pickup to adjust to taste so that it goes back and forth and it's not super crazy, right? If you're using odd pickups or some stuff that you have out of your drawer or mismatched sets, 
sometimes that can make that level a little weird. Sometimes the neck pickup will still be too strong and you have to lower it down just a little bit more, which is what ends up happening with a pair of P90s because it's a lot of pickup, right? So uh, it ends up being like these, these are about four millimeters, something like that. About probably 175 thousandths, somewhere right in there. And the guitar sounds great. <laughs> I'm really happy with this setup. Now, what I was doing there was playing a bunch of open string chords. I just want to kind of check intonation, see if it sounds in tune um, with a bunch of open strings. And if you noticed, I played a couple of those chords over again because I realized I was gripping the guitar out of tune. I was just like squeezing too hard. So you just want to make sure that that's, you know, you try to be, you know, a little bit on the easy side when you do this. Play with the touch that you're supposed to play with when you play. As we mentioned in the beginning of this video, um, there are a million ways to set up a guitar, right? Like there's a lot of different variations to this. This is how I do it. And I've had very good results over many years of doing it this way. The flat radius uh, or the flat um, neck relief on the fretboard thing is new to me. Uh, Matt at Texas Toast Guitars turned me on to that and I've been doing it for about two years now and I really, really like it. All my guitars are set up that way. Um, and I, I really like it. I know that might be the most kind of controversial little point about this um, that we you might talk about in the comments. Um, but he does that with every production guitar that he makes, you know, dozens and dozens of those a year. And I do it with every guitar I have here and it works great. And I've traveled all over the country from deserts to rainy areas because we travel a lot with guitars and I've never ever had a problem. So it, it works really well. It's easy to remember. That's the biggest thing. And it's easy to do. Um, I didn't time it. What time is it right now? 10.15. So this took me about an hour to do. That was with shooting the video. About an hour and a half actually. Uh, if I were to not be shooting the video, it, the whole thing would take me about 15 minutes to make these adjustments. Once you kind of get an idea of the order of things, right? Um, tune the guitar to pitch with the strings you're going to use. Neck relief first, string height second, uh, intonation last, adjust pickup heights after that. Um, we did not talk about the nut, obviously. We discussed that earlier. Uh, but that to me, every new guitar should get this. Every new guitar, you pull it out of the box, you do this because new guitars do not come with this. New guitars come with uh, a sort of general, like we mentioned earlier, just like a general setup, right? So they, uh, they need this. And then this is where you make the guitar yours, not just something that comes out of the box. So when you pull a guitar out of the box and it's got some fret buzz, it's got some stuff, don't blame that on Fender, don't blame that on Gibson, just make it yours. Take you 20 minutes to do it, three tools, a tuner, 
uh, something to measure the string height with, and uh, a screwdriver set. I'll leave a link to all the tools in the description because you're going to want that stuff if you've got more than a couple of guitars to do, and I think you'll dig it. Thanks for hanging out. This has been Dylan Talks Tone. We will see you in the next video.